Hello everybody, I'm glad to have you on today's episode of Star Wars Nerds and Geeks. So I'm going to be starting this series where I uh, give my thoughts and opinions on every live action Star Wars movie that I can think of. The first film I'll be talking about is Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Now, I know what you're thinking, I have a bad feeling about this. Well, I guess it is true that The Phantom Menace has a bad reputation. Lots of people don't like it. Lots of people don't like one of the biggest characters in that movie, namely Jar Jar Binks. Lots of people hate him. But I think Star Wars Phantom Menace is one of the most unnecessarily hated films in the Star Wars franchise. Just like everything ever created, there are pros and cons to this movie. So let's just get this out of the way and talk about the cons. So as I previously mentioned, a lot of people hate Star Wars Episode One. One of the reasons I believe this is, is because of Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks was created by George Lucas as a comical relief character um, to make the franchise more bright, to brighten up the franchise and to make it more kid friendly. But lots of people didn't like this. They believe or they th- they believe that Jar Jar didn't add a lot to the uh, franchise, that he contributed nothing. He was just a pointless character, and they thought it was too comical and just completely unnecessary and a stupid addition. Longtime fans of Star Wars don't like Episode One for another reason, the addition of CGI. Now, the original trilogy used only models, like the iconic scene of the Star Destroyer chasing down the Tantive IV used completely handmade models. Whereas, when Episode One came out, technology had advanced, so now uh, CGI was in play. But, CGI has its ups and downs. On the bright side, you can make large-scale things like the um, Luke or Hulk battleship of the Trade Federation much easier and much cheaper than with models, but it doesn't look as good. Um, so uh, this is a big problem with Episode 1 because most of it used CGI, and many fans think uh, or bl- think that Star Wars Episode 1 just doesn't feel like Star Wars purely because the um, the CGI just makes it a, a totally different feel than the original trilogy. And it kind of separates the two from them, from what they were growing up with to what uh, they co- what's coming in to them now. So while we're on a topic of a different feel from the original trilogy, let's go to the plot and the characters of the movie. So in the original trilogy, there was a well-developed plot and um, that was very interesting, that was very intricate, and that many people fell in love with. And the characters, most of all, of that movie were stunning. They had incredible, their backstories were developed intensely, that by the time you got to the sixth movie, you were rooting for them, you loved them, and you just couldn't um, wait to see what happened to them next. But then, when fans saw episode one, they came in uh, wanting something similar to that, wanting something... Uh, just like what they fell in love with with the original trilogy. But that was not what happened. What they got was instead a interesting movie, I believe, but the plot was kind of, uh, you could say, was all over the place. It was hard to follow. It had a lot of slow moments, mostly on Coruscant, which... It is slow, but 
it's not it doesn't make for an interesting movie it has interesting backstory like about the jedi temple about the senate like i personally really wanted to know about but it doesn't make for something that you want to watch and that uh that being said it also the characters weren't as exciting weren't as well developed you didn't love them as much as you did the original trilogy when the fourth movie ended you uh were like i love this luke skywalker princess leia she's awesome han solo chewbacca i want to know what happens to them next but when you reach the end of episode one you just are like what's happening next you have characters like obi-wan kenobi and anakin that will go throughout the rest of the trilogy but they don't they don't really get developed in any way and they aren't as lovable of a characters and so yeah those are three big reasons that fans don't like the uh Star Wars episode 1 it feels uh it feels different from the original trilogy both from the CGI, the plot, and the character development. And Jar Jar Binks is just not a loved character at all. So now it's time to talk about the pros of Star Wars The Phantom Menace. Now, pretty sure many of you out there are like, what? No, 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 there aren't any pros of Star Wars Phantom Menace. It's a bad movie overall. But... I'm pretty sure that when I tell you these pros, you're gonna be you're gonna watch those movies again. You're gonna be like, you know what? It's a bad movie, but I like that. So here they are. So number one on the list. Now I really love the original trilogy, but one thing that I was just so bothered by it is the lightsaber fights. They were, they were really cool and they were fun to watch and. I liked them, but once I saw the episode one start uh, lightsaber fight, I could never go back. I loved it. The new technology made it just insane. The choreograph was incredible. It was just a lightsaber fight like I've never seen one before. It was I I can't. It's hard to describe. It was just incredible to watch it was insanely entertaining it was it was just, it was just amazing in general and while we're on topics of fights if you go up to the battles taking place during that we have the uh what i'm gonna call the assault on the throne room where they're um, trying to get to where Newt Gunray is, Padme and her loyal guards. That was another one of the interesting fights where I liked how they were able to use droids and have them um, be fighting the people instead of having it stormtroopers. It made it uh more a little a little bit more fantasy like for me and it made it really cool especially i really love the droidicas just to see a bunch of wheeled monsters uh rolling in and then popping up with their shields all around them and uh padme and her guards were like this is too much we have to give up i ju- i just thought it was insane and then the other, the third fight going on up there, the battle in the skies, I, I liked that it was kind, that it was similar to the, uh, to the first, uh, fight, the first attack on the Death Star. I liked how it was kind of similar, yet it was different, and it wasn't terribly unique, but it was still a pretty cool fight, and... I liked how there's three fights going on at once, and it would just sh- uh, show each of them at the time. I thought it was really well done. And, yeah, I just thought the fighting in general was really cool and really well done. And it made it so exciting for me to watch. And even 
I forgot to mention the fourth fight going on, the gun Gun Army against the Gungan Grand Army against the Trade Federation. That was a really cool fight. I got to see for the first time ever, I believe, an army go against an army in Star Wars. It was it was really cool. And I know I said that Jar Binks is awful and lots of people don't like him. And that he didn't add a lot. But in that one fight scene, I kind of liked him. How he would do this, how he would do all this random stuff. And yet it would somehow end up helping the Gungan army. And I don't know, I just, I just kind of like that a lot. That's, of course, just my opinion. So, I know I'm contradicting a lot of the points I made about the cons. But something I also kind of liked was how episode one described the background of the Senate and the Jedi Order. Something that you've always heard about, but you never really got to see a movie about it just yet. And that's like, I kind of feel like that's what the uh, prequel trilogy was all about, is making a backstory to all the things that you heard about in the original trilogy but never got to see. And I know it wasn't in, it wasn't that enjoyable to watch to most people and it was just long and boring and unnecessary. And I do think that it should have been more interesting and it should have been better done and it should have been so slow. But I did I it was something that I really enjoyed just the just seeing the uh background of everything. It was like I got to see this enjoyable story in the original trilogy, and then I just got to see what it all came from uh, when I first watched episode one, and I thought I thought that was really good. Um, another thing about that with the plot is something I feel like that's been really well done. One of the on the I feel like one of the only plot elements in the prequel trilogy that has been done really uh pretty good is Emperor Palpatine or I guess um Darth Sidious going to Palpatine going to Senator uh, Palpatine going to Supreme Chancellor Palpatine going all the way to Emperor Palpatine and I thought it was really really awesome and very interesting to see how his beginning started and how he has always been manipulative and he's always been just a someone just sort of hiding back in the background manipulating things so that everything would turn out his way and it was incredible to me to see how in the phantom menace when obi-wan kenobi was just looked like barely an adult how Emperor Palpatine was still, um, what am I trying to say? How Emperor Palpatine was still, uh, manipulating things and making, setting the story in motion. I thought that was incredible. And, yeah, that, that would, I just, I just love the background on Emperor Palpatine. It makes... For it makes something at least a good plot and a good background, and it's a very uh nice connection to the original trilogy and I like that about the Phantom Menace how there are some things about it that will connect it to the original trilogy, like how I said with the uh space fight against the Trade Federation battleship, the Luker Hulk battleship um how it's kind of like the first Death Star attack. I I just really like how they kind of relate it back to the original trilogy. Except they make it different. And yeah, I really, I really like that. So the final thing that I really liked about The Phantom Menace is my... I th- I'm, yeah... My personal favorite canon Sith Lord, Darth, uh, 
Darth Maul. All-time favorite, he was only in one episode, uh, which a lot of fans did not like, and that might have even been a reason that they didn't like it. They loved Darth Maul, but he just died off right away. But I thought he was... I, I, I just ignored that. I just thought he was an incredible character from the beginning when you first see him talking to uh, Darth Sidious to him talking to him uh, with the uh, Neomodians. I thought that was amazing how you could see just the fear he provoked in them and how he did barely anything on Tatooine. He sent out probe droids. He just found uh, Qui-Gon, Jin, Obi-Wan, and he uh, tracked them to the starship and he had a short little duel with Qui-Gon Jinn. But that started this insane um, uh, fear in the Jedi Order about how they thought the Sith were gone. But now they think that they're coming back. And it just, you could see the, uh, you could sort of see the panic that was going on in the Jedi's mind as Qui-Gon Jinn recounted the story of Darth Maul attacking him. And... I thought that was just insane how he was able to do so much with so little. And that kind of relates back to Palpatine, how he was setting that emotion. But it all rest it all rested on um Darth Maul's shoulders. And I thought he's that he was an incredible warrior just in general. Like I've read a bunch of books on Darth Maul that are telling like his perspective on it and it just makes everything so much cooler like as you can as he's fighting Qui-Gon Jinn he realizes all of his strengths and weaknesses just within that really quick fight he's already able he already knows how to kill Qui-Gon Jinn uh who is a uh who is a Jedi master by the way it's something that not mo- that most uh Jedi don't even aren't even able to become. So I thought that was insane. How he- and then when he finally comes into the last his last duel, the uh, w- the coolest duel not the coolest duel, but that was a really cool, amazing, well done duel. And it was just insane how he's able to take on two uh, Jedi at the exact same time, how he was able to fully defend them off, how he was able to kill one of them, and how he was almost able to kill the other. And I just, I think that he is a really great character. I could go on and on about Darth Maul, but I'll just, I'll cut it short for now and leave it at, I, lo- I love him. He's a, He's an incredible character. So to summarize, the um, pros are that the new technologies made the fights more interesting, more intricate, more just more visually appealing in general, and how another thing is the fights, uh, the way that they moved from fight one to fight two to fight three, back to fight one to fight four to back, back to fight two, just all over the place, kind of made it organized chaos. Uh, it was just really cool to watch. And... Uh, the overarching plot of Palpatine, uh, how the entire Star Wars, every Star Wars movie has kind of been Palpatine's story and how he's been control, uh, uh, how he has been manipulating the galaxy to serve his needs and just how episode one kind of started all that and, uh, introduced you, uh, truly and obviously to that story. And finally, Darth Maul, a, uh, probably the best developed character I think in that mo- in that movie if not uh, definitely one of the best developed characters uh, just an in- just an incredible addition so now what is my personal opinion of Star Wars Phantom Menace we've gone through the cons of it we've gone through the pros of it and now what what do I think well I th- I do agree that Jar Jar Binks, unnecessary, childish, 
I ju- I didn't I didn't hate him as much as most fans do, but I certainly do not like him, and I feel like he should still be there, but he should have been done much better. But I don't feel like I should let that ruin Star Wars Episode One for me. I feel like it's not the best Star Wars movie. It's I don't feel like it's even close to the best, but. It's still a great movie. It has great characters in it. It has great fight scenes. And it leads you in some ways to see what the rest of the trilogy is going to be like. You know there's going to be the coolest fights ever. You know that uh, Palpatine is going to be doing a bunch of stuff to the to the Republic and turning it into the Empire. I feel like that's a really great... Um, that The Phantom Menace is, while not the best start to this, is certainly a great one. So yes, The Phantom Menace could have been better, but it is still a pretty great movie. So there you have it. I have analyzed Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. I have given you my opinions of it. Uh, please tell me your opinions. I'd love to hear them. And uh, stick around for the next video where I'll be talking about Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. And finally, at the end of the series, I will be ranking the um, the movies from my favorite, from my least favorite to my favorite. And I'll be uh, explaining why for each of them. So, stick around. Once again, this is Star Wars Nerds and Geeks signing off. See you next time.